Hello, it's Amazon Mandy, and today I wanted to make a video showing how I use Thibra. I'm still experimenting with it. I may find other better ways to do things or different techniques, but these are kind of my first experiments with it, and so far I absolutely love this stuff. A lot of people are going to have different opinions on which thermoplastic is better, and that's fine. Like, Everybody uses products in different ways and wants different things from them. And sometimes you just have a knack with something. And I think that's great. So if you're somebody that prefers something like Warbla, great, go ahead and use it. And that's awesome. But I've always struggled with Warbla for a few reasons, which I'll go into later. I don't have those issues with Fibra. So right now I am really loving this stuff. And um, I'll try to talk while I work to try to make the video a little shorter instead of just sitting here talking at you first. So, um, just to get started, I just wanted to show you guys something before I show you how I make this stuff. Um, I did a little sample piece, and I just took a little scrap piece of foam, and I heated the fibber up a little bit, and I wrapped it around it. Because I want to address one of the first questions people are asking me is, they're like, oh no, does it stick to foam? Like, I, I don't, you know, I want it to stick to foam. And that really confuses me, because I don't know why people have this deep need that it sticks to foam. Because even when you're using Warbla or anything else around foam, you still wrap it around the edges so that it stays in place. Like you can't just lay a layer of thermoplastic on top of foam and expect it to stay extremely well. I wouldn't trust it anyway. You always wrap it around the edges. That's kind of a given. So one of the benefits, I think it's a benefit, of the fact that Fibra doesn't stick to foam is I'm just going to tug on this little guy. Okay, so I've pulled the foam out, and now you just have straight up shaped Thibra. I haven't used it in this way yet, and I, I plan on experimenting with that at some point, but I think it's pretty cool that you can shape it and then remove the foam, and then you have the shape left. I know that's gonna come in handy for a lot of people's projects. I think that's a great characteristic of it, so I don't know why people are freaking out that it doesn't stick to foam. Stop complaining, that's silly. Okay, so I'm just going to jump right in here and show you uh, one of the ways that I use it to make armor gauntlets. And uh, here's what you'll need to get started. Crappy scissors that I use to cut out my fibra. Don't use your fabric scissors, use crafting scissors. I have my foam shape that I'm going to be using and covering the fibra. And this is going to be a gauntlet of sorts. It looks small right now, but I actually have to add a lot to it. And there's a gap on the underside because I plan on drilling holes in it and having it lace up when I'm done. And then I already pre-cut my slice of fibra that is big enough to go around it. So basically, you know, I cut it to shape and then left access. A lot of excess. I'll probably be a lot stingy with it as I work with it later. But, um, you know, that's kind of what you'll need. And I just pre-cut it because the rolls I bought are huge. They won't even fit on my table. So I rolled them out on the floor and cut what we need to get started. Heating gun. Uh, I have this brand, Wagner. Right got it from Amazon. It's very affordable. And this little guy has worked for a couple years. It's been great. I love this thing. Fibra works best, I feel, when it's warm, not hot. Uh, when you get it hot, it becomes incredibly tacky, sticky, and gummy, which makes it difficult to work with. It wants to stick to itself, stick to the surface, stick to everything around it. Why make something super hot if it doesn't need to be? When it's warm, you can totally work with it. So that's what I do. And then I have a whole bunch of tools for clay sculpting. And I think some of these are even for cake decorating, but they work perfectly when you're doing little details like this. I'll show you how I use them later, but they're dirt cheap. You can get them at most craft stores. A little water, my paint glass of water over here that I'll show you how I use that. And I think we're ready to get started. If I think of anything else, we'll cover that. So I've been using Fibra with the printed side attached to my phone. Uh, it's just the way I prefer to do it because I like the super smooth side on top. Uh, other people may like the smooth side down. That's fine. This is how I like to do it. So the first thing I'm going to do, I really went a little bit excessive when I cut this out. I'm going to have to be a little more stingy with my Thibra as I cut it out from now on. But I'm gonna trim my excess off. And whenever I come to a corner, I'm gonna trim that away so that when I start folding it around, it's a lot easier.
and you'll notice I left a little bit less on this front edge because I'm going to be attaching some other stuff to that, so I'm not too worried about that side right now. So where I'm going to start is I'm just going to hold it upside down in my hand and start using the heat gun to heat the edges, right along the edges. And I, I do have it on high for this because this part, it's pretty non-detail specific. We're just warming it up so it starts to hang. And keep moving the heat gun so it evenly heats all of the edges instead of working on one side at a time because you want it all to be pretty evenly heated. You don't want one side to cool while you're working with another. You can see it's starting to get floppy and hang over. I'm going to start working this underneath the edges and try not to push too much on the top or heaven forbid you leave a fingerprint. So I'm starting to work this under the edges just a little bit at a time. And then I'm gonna turn it over so you can see what I'm doing. You're already seeing some of my foam shapes through there, but that's fine. So this is all I'm doing. I'm starting to wrap this around and fold it on itself, just like you're wrapping a present if you need to in certain places. But I find this stuff is pretty darn agreeable. And if you accidentally stick it to something, I like the fact that I can pull it up and move it and not have it just destroyed, which really frustrated me with some thermoplastics because you didn't have that option before. And there you go. Like that's a pretty good start right there. I'm happy right now. Put down a piece of paper because I'm a little bit worried that you guys might not be able to see my details so well. Hopefully you can see it a little better against the white. I'm not sure. So I'm going to start heating my whole surface now. And you're going to see it's going to start hugging the shapes that I have underneath my thumb. That's taking like no work at all. This stuff just wants to go into all of my details, which is lovely. And now this is where I'm going to get my little pink cup of water and my tools. Okay, I think I'm going to start, I'm going to start with this. So I like that edge there. So what I'm going to start doing, and if you're really worried about this, stick into it, which I don't see a problem with, but I get it a little wet in the water. And then it doesn't stick. And you can just start working it in to those shapes. Don't push. Just kind of let the tool guide itself. It really doesn't take much in the way of pressure here. I'm not going to go in, into too many of my fine corners right now. So I'm going to use a finer tool for that. I'm just going to go along all these curved edges and start working it in there. And I'm leaving water on the fibra. It doesn't matter. It's not going to hurt anything at all. I'm starting to feel like it's getting just a little cool, so I'm going to warm it up. And I'm going to go back at it. Smooth out that line that I left in there. It's probably going to take a little sanding when we're done, but no big deal. Okay, I'm going to warm it up again, and I'm going to jump on it with a little bit more of a fine tool. Hmm, I think this guy for getting in my curves. I'm 
And I'm leaving drops of water all over this thing. I'm sure you can see it, but that's fine. It's not going to hurt a thing. And let's see, I'm going to switch to this tool. This is more of a clay tool. As you see, it has a, hope you can see, a little rounded edge. Okay, I'm going to dab off some of the water that I'm leaving all over this thing. I'm going to warm it up again and go at it with more details. Now I could work in down to my details a little bit more, but honestly I'm not going to because in the end I'm going to want this to look a little bit like tooled leather. So I'm not going to go crazy etching out my details. I kind of like this where it's at. So now I need it to fit my arm. So what we're going to do is I'm going to start warming it. I'm going to start warming it. I want to get the tabs underneath warm. So I'm just going to hit those really lightly, not a whole lot. I just want them to have some give, and that's enough of that. And this is one of those instances that will show why I really like that you don't have to heat paper up so much because I'm going to form this to kind of curve around my arm, and if I had to make this super hot, that would kind of suck. So I'm just going to lay this on there and gently start pulling it. And right here, I'm not getting enough give right here, so I'm going to warm these. Because I want this to curve, not just fold. Now, I'm getting a little bit of bubbling from the heat and the curving, so I'm going to get my finger a little wet to avoid fingerprinting. Work those bubbles down. Continue to shape this. I think my edges need to be warmed, but I'll do those next. So. Just working out some of these little bubbles while it cools. I really like how you can get your fingers wet and work on this stuff. This makes me very happy. And I can see one or two places I am going to have to sand. I left a fingerprint right here. I'll have to sand that. And I left one right there. Seems to be when I was curving it, I left my fingerprints. So I will have to work those out. But overall, I am really extremely pleased, especially for a first attempt. 
at just how agreeable this stuff is to being shoved around and moved where you want it. I really like that. And another thing is it's extremely, it's, it's a lot lighter than Warbla. Warbla is really heavy. Anybody who's worn a lot of Warbla armor will definitely tell you. Warbla is super heavy over time. And, um, you know, Thibra still has some weight, but not, not like Warbla. Warbla, exhausting to wear a lot of it for too long. So there you go. I have an arm gauntlet and I'm going to drill holes in there so I can lace it and tighten that up when I want, when I'm ready. Okay, so um, this is our final product. Uh, we have the Thibra wrapped around the gauntlet and I feel like it worked out really well, especially for a first try. Like this is the first time I've ever tried to do something with this stuff like this. And I'm really pleased with it. And I left my gap so I can drill my holes and put my lacing in once it's all completed painting. I will be doing more videos on how I figure out sanding, priming, and painting, uh, what works and what doesn't. But I have a feeling it's not going to be a big issue with this stuff at all. I'm really pleased with it. It's also very light, at least compared to Warbla. I feel like a full suit, if you make armor with this, is going to be a lot lighter than a suit of Warbla armor. Warbla is so heavy to wear. I'm going to be using a lot of this for a costume I have coming up this summer, so we'll see how that goes. Most of my tutorials or how-tos or learning processes are all going to be free and available for everybody, and I do do tutorials that are Patreon subscribers only if you want to check that out. But you won't have to. Most of them are free. I just appreciate the support. It helps me buy time to sit around and make these. But um, let me know what you think. If you have any questions or comments, and I'll try to respond. I'm not an expert on this stuff. I don't consider myself an expert. I'm just learning, and I want to share what I figure out as I go along. And I'm curious to see what other people come up with, too. But so far, I'm extremely happy with this stuff. Debra, let me know how you guys fare with it too. I'd love to see what you make with it. Thanks.